Okay, so what's a SOG? SOG is a German company that manufactures a air extraction device or a suction device that's fitted to um, caravan cassette toilet systems, caravans, camper trailers, or I suppose um, camper vans, etc., motorhomes. Um, and the idea behind a SOG is to um, extract uh, air from the cassette down through the toilet bowl when it's in use, um, extract air, create negative pressure in the bowl, extract air down through into the cassette and out and, and uh, extract it outside of the van. Now, it doesn't move a lot of air, it moves a little bit of air um, and by introducing air to the contents of the cassette it helps the bacterial breakdown of the contents. So that's basically what a SOG is in case you didn't know. Um, I imagine people who are looking at this are probably thinking, yes, I know what a SOG is. I don't worry. Tell me, all right. So that's what a SOG is. Um, so uh, I have a caravan now with an ensuite, and I saw this at a, I saw one of these SOG units at a um, camping shop when we were buying some other equipment. And I thought that's a great idea because one of the advantages is there's no chemicals uh, required for the cassette. And um, that uh, negates the need to, um, you know, be quite specific about where the cassette can be dumped. Um, because there's no chemicals introduced, it can be dumped into septic systems, etc. And you don't have the cost of chemicals, which is another advantage. So um, that that seemed to be a good idea. Now I've seen a few of these SOGs um, fitted to a couple of vans, and um, I had a look at the kit, and they're um, interestingly um, a little bit complex. But what I found was uh, from reading a forum site that a guy had done a DIY one, but he hadn't written it up. He, he'd put some photos up, which you know were a bit hard to follow if you hadn't um, had a good look at what's in the um, cassette system. So it turned out that this was uh, almost the same unit as mine. So I thought, well, that's, that's good. I'll go and have a look at it. So this is what uh, this is what I did, and I built it all for basically nothing. I had to go and buy a box and some little um, a plastic box and some um, a couple of bits for that. But uh, my outlay was probably under twenty bucks for the whole thing, rather than three or four hundred dollars to buy the kit. Um, and I don't have to modify the cassette, which the other kits seem to do. Uh, they drill holes in them, put special fittings on them uh, that have to be taken off and removed and put back on again. So this seemed like a better way. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so here's your typical Threatford or and similar other similar toilets and you'll see down here there's a handle and this opens and closes a vent in the bottom of the toilet so there's a vent down here that opens and closes and the idea being that um, you can you shut it off when it's not in use that that handle is operated So that's that's open at the moment that's shut so there's a flat closes and stops it right now down to the business end this is the cassette so with the kits you buy they modify this end cap will provide a new one with a vent that comes out of here comes down and then you you have to change this panel and there's a filter in here and a vent gets added on the outside that's typically what they do, so they, they do it that way. And then when you're going to empty it, you have to disconnect the uh, hose off here. Or another kit has a uh, plate that um, you drill a hole in here and add a thing here and the hose comes out and goes off to the vent. And so this door has a fan built into it and filter material. So different approach on this one and, and what this other guy did um, from what I could gather was, was this. So here's the advantage with this particular unit this hose here is water that's for the flushing going into the water tank the cassette simply pulls out like this and you'll notice underneath here there is a hole that goes right up through the middle of the um, 
right up through the middle of the cassette and provides ventilation and what that does is it comes up to here this panel at the top here I'll just put my light back on and this panel here if you pull this out that columns on this side there's a little seesaw arrangement in here and a and a short very short pipe as you can see on the inside here that opens and closes Let's see if we can just have a look at this thing oh there isn't that one chemicals is because of yeah that's that column there you can possibly see illuminate it that's the column up the inside there coming up from the base goes right through to the top of this thing so the idea here is you the idea here is to uh, make use of this uh, capacity to this vent that's that's operated here so this is normally closed but when you push the cassette into into this you'll see here this little hole which goes down through the bottom has a raised section that raised section marries up with this ridge here on this vent so that when that's pushed into place this activates a little seesaw up the top and opens the vent. So that's how that works. And once that's opened, air can be sucked down through here, in through the little vent, down that column, out through the bottom. When it comes out through the bottom, when these two are lined up, it, can, it goes into this hole here. Now I've added some foam here. Um, and the reason that's there is to, you'll see here that there's a, a gap here. So if you just put this in, you didn't have the foam, it would suck air through here and not down through the toilet. So that's simply there to provide a, a seal across here. So that's that. That's what the purpose of that is. So what's under this little plate? Well, I don't know what its original purpose was, but what's under it now is this little... 50 millimeter fan I've added. Get that to bloody focus. Um, and this this fan, below this fan is a recess in this in this housing. That's a, that's probably 10 millimeters thick, 10 millimeters deep. Um, and then it had more white plastic, so it's just a recess. Um, but that base of that was sitting directly onto the timber floor. Um, so what we did, or what I did, was put a pilot hole through here, underneath here, right in the centre, and drilled that through, right through the floor of the caravan, and um, and then I uh, got a hole saw and cut a 50 millimetre hole to match the 50 millimetre fan. Um, that's a 50 millimetre 12 volt fan, so it's quite good. And then that vents then to the outside. So this has now extracted the air down through the toilet, into the cassette, down the column, and then out through this, through the fan, and then extracts to the outside. So we'll go and have a look at underneath. So underneath here, I've um, built a little electrical junction box, which I got from Bunnings, from the hardware store. They're about $9 something. Um, and it's about 110 by 110 by 80 or 90 millimetres or 70 millimetres high or something like that. Uh, and this, was, this thing here is purely to um, house activated charcoal filter, which you have to have that kills any odours coming out. And they have that in the, um, in the SOG kits is, is that. So these two 32 millimetre sockets are electrical conduit sockets this is an electrical junction box a uh, couple of 32 millimeter sockets just to provide external venting and i i'll probably 
put some mesh or something over those because wasps will want to build a nest in here otherwise. So, <clears throat> you know, they're sort of a dollar or something. So here's the fan. You can see here, we've got the 50 millimeter fan up on the inside. Um, and that comes out and this box then houses some um, fabric which is activated charcoal an activated charcoal filter and that just sits in there like that uh, as I say to kill any odors that are being vented to the outside world uh, so there's just two holes in here uh, um, I sh I, it's very difficult to get these into place in this box so they these two, um, as you can probably see, one of them's. You can't see. I'll take that off. One of them sitting up against this. Uh, screw me up. So I put to put a piece of wood in here to support this as you're tightening it up in the middle. Because both sides. But even if I tried to move those closer together, I wouldn't have enough room to clear that screw hole. So, and I'm pretty sure the box is the same. It's actually square, so it wouldn't help which side I put it on. But anyway. That's uh, so. That's that's all. The, that's pretty much it. The other advantage I've got with this, uh, with these two 32 mil sockets. Oh, the other reason I, I thought well, that was an easy way to create a couple of vents. Um, but the additional value is, if there was any odor, um, this is the living side of the caravan. So if there was any odor, I can just buy some 32 mil electrical flexible conduit and I can duct it right back over to the other side of the van um, on the non-living side if I needed to or somewhere else but I can I can easily use flexible conduit that fits this and so, it, so it's you know it's ideal okay. it's just a good robust um, in these, these commercial electrical boxes and these fittings make it you know nice and simple to uh, use as a air extraction some sort some method of extracting the area and gives you that added advantage to put those uh, to put some duct on. So the only other part then is activating this thing. So the idea is that uh, when the toilets you come in to use it and you operate the handle which is behind this panel here, um, it operates this little trapdoor up the top here or at the trapdoor will the orange button on the cassette this button here when you push this in that button lines up with that extrusion up there I don't know you probably can't see it but anyway there's that you see that little button in there lines up so let's have a look and see what that does so when you get in here and have a look you need a switch up here so that when this um, when this handle down here is operated that we had a look at on the inside let's move from one side to the other it turns this and opens the vent on the cassette so that's switched off at the moment take the lid off the fan so you'll see I've mounted a switch up here on a piece of metal and it's it's um, it's a maker bracket so you can buy these long strips of metal and bunnings hardware which has got holes and stuff in it and this is just simply a micro switch with an arm on it um, and so what happens is when you turn this knob or when this knob gets turned by the handle at the front it operates the switch you probably heard that's a fan coming on there's our fan operating so it's now exhausting uh, outside via that box below it's exhausting the air and It's creating suction down through this hole. I can feel that pulling air down through here. So, switch is the only tricky bit is putting this switch in. Now, the switch wires back over to here, and in these toilets, there's uh, always 12 volts here. So, there's a 12 volt feed. This was all existing. I simply brought that switched wire back here 
I brought the the fan wire goes through the side here. Um, drill a hole in there. I undid these two bottom screws and I put a screwdriver in here and simply lifted the base up to give me a few millimetres clearance. Uh, and when I did that, that allowed me to push this wire in through here and get it to appear up here. I used a little a piece of stiff wire um, to do that with a bend in it so I could just poke it, it just bent around and up until I saw it appear over here. And then I used that to pull the wire from the fan through. Uh, so that then comes down along here. Um, so 12 volts, the positive goes up to the switch, comes back on the black wire, uh, joins um, a red wire, and then the earth goes up and connects into all the earths here. So it's just a switch in series with the positive and the negatives connected straight with all the other negatives. That is it. That's all you have to do in this particular instance. As I say, there's others. I had a look at another toilet which had a conduit, 25 millimeter conduit, that ran down here through the floor and appeared underneath the caravan. Again, it would be quite simple to add a fan to extract the air out through that, through that tube without doing anything too extreme. So that's the only tricky bit. Let's have a look at this switch here. I'll, I'll take it out. I haven't glued it in yet. So as I say, this is called Maker Bracket and you buy it in strips at Bunnings. And they're like three bucks for 600, 450 millimeters long. Or, you know, it might be $4 or something like that. And you just cut off whatever length you want. Now, of course, the holes don't line up. Um, and you have to get this, I had to mount this at an angle so that um, as this thing opened and it's that way, it didn't collect the back of the switch. It's got to clear the switch. So it sits up in, in there. So it's going to be far enough back. And then when this comes around, it activates it. It's the fan operating. So let's have another look at that. So I'm going to glue this in because I haven't yet. I'm going to put a slastic or something on it. I want to be able to remove it. It's a very difficult area to work in. And as you can see over here, this has depressed this lever on the switch. So it's a pretty standard micro switch. You can buy them anywhere. It doesn't carry hardly any. These fans draw 0.1 of an amp or less than 0.1 of an amp. So it's next to nothing. So that's, that's how that works. So this bracket is simply bent so it's the switch working. It's got a little lever that pushes that black button down. Um, I used a piece of thick steel, uh, probably about four, four mil steel, five mil steel, and I created that bend in it, um, bending it over the, the four mil steel. That gap is about that, it's about four millimeters. So this sort of sits up in here tight but not tight enough to stay there, so you will need something to damn it. You will need something to um, make it stay there. So look, that's that's it. Let's jam back up in place. See that's not right. Is it? Let me have a look. So yep, get it up there move this thing so that it's on it's on now just on and then you turn it back around this way and make sure it's clearing the switch when it's sitting that way which it is so that's the only tricky bit to work in this underneath the toilet so this is the only part that's a bit you've got to get this right you get that gap just right so that all of this operates freely so this goes in like this 
and that's it it's um, ready to go and it all works very well and you know nice and simple as I said I had to switch I had when I had to go and buy some of that well I even had the bracket material uh, I had a little 50 millimeter by 10 millimeter thick fan to fit in the base here um, and I've hot glued that in that fans just glued in above the hole and um, I had to buy the junction box for nine bucks so you know the whole thing's cost me you know under probably well under twenty dollars to do it and it, it works fine it works just like the real one so there you go the sog do it yourself thanks for watching